Hello everyone. Welcome all of my viewers to this brand new video. Today, we're diving into a beginner-friendly vulnerable machine known as Blogger1 from the Blogger series. You can find the machine categorized as easy and beginner level in terms of difficulty. To get started, head over to the Vulnhub website and download the vulnerable image. If you're new to Vulnhub, check out our Vulnhub playlist for helpful videos. Once you've downloaded the image, the next step is setting up the server in VirtualBox. This process is quite simple and involves importing the OVA file into VirtualBox using the Import Appliance feature. Importing the OVA file into VirtualBox is a straightforward process. Here's how to do it. Launch VirtualBox. Go to Tools and select Import. Choose the downloaded OVA file from your computer. Click Next and review the appliance details and settings. You can adjust them as needed. Click Finish to start the import. Once the import is finished, you'll see the Blogger 1 vulnerable machine listed in the VirtualBox Manager under the Vulnhub group. Select the virtual machine, go to Settings, and change the network adapter to Host Only Adapter. It's important to ensure that both your Kali Linux machine, used for attacks, and the vulnerable machine are connected to the same network. So make sure they're both connected via the Host Only Adapter. When attempting to start the virtual machine, an issue arises, leading to automatic aborts. Let's troubleshoot this. To resolve the problem, we'll need to extract the OVA file and manually install the VM. Firstly, let's remove the previously created VM. Next, we'll rename the OVA extension to zip. Since direct renaming isn't possible, open command prompt from this directory by typing cmd in the address bar. This will open command prompt in the same directory. Use the dir command to list all directories and files. Then, to rename, utilize the ren command. With the OVA extension changed to zip, we can now extract it using WinRAR. After extraction, I discovered several helpful files, including two VMDK files. Our next step involves creating a new virtual machine. In VirtualBox, click on New to create a new VM. Name it Blogger1 and select the operating system type and version as Linux Ubuntu 64-bit. Proceed by allocating RAM size for your VM and click Next. Select Use an existing virtual hard disk file and import the VMDK file extracted earlier. After clicking Next, then Finish, the setup is complete. Once again, change the network adapter to host only. Now, attempt to start the VM to check if it works. If it still doesn't, further investigation is needed. Upon thorough analysis, I discovered another VMDK file. To rectify this, go to Settings, then Storage, and add the additional VMDK file. Now, try starting the VM again. Finally, you'll notice that our vulnerable machine is ready, with a login prompt awaiting. Let's dive into the fun. Enumeration The initial step in our attack is enumeration, which involves identifying the IP address of our target machine using NetDiscover. To execute this, open a terminal and run NetDiscover-I followed by specifying the network interface name which in this case is ETH1. From the scan results, we've obtained our target IP address, 192.168.95.10. Next, we'll conduct a network scan to identify open ports, a crucial step in the enumeration process. This helps us understand the attack surface and strategize targeted attacks. We'll use the popular NMAP tool for this task. 
Run nmap-sc-sv followed by specifying the IP address. In this command, hyphen sc is used to perform a script scan using the default set of scripts, while hyphen sv enables version detection, allowing us to identify which versions are running on which port. After completing the network scan, we have discovered the presence of two open ports. Port 22 TCP is running an SSH service, indicating that gaining access to the server with valid credentials will be straightforward. Additionally, port 80 TCP is hosting an HTTP service, suggesting that a vulnerable website may be accessible. Let's explore the web content hosted on port 80. To do this, open a web browser of your choice and navigate to the target's IP address in the URL bar. Upon visiting the website, it's evident that it is being hosted. Let's delve deeper into its web technology for better understanding. To accomplish this, we'll utilize Wapalizer, a Firefox extension designed for discerning web technology. Upon analysis, we discover that the website is created using Bootstrap. After a thorough examination, there doesn't seem to be anything noteworthy to enumerate on the web page. However, there might be hidden or difficult to access directories and pages, which we can explore through directory busting. We'll use GoBuster as our tool of choice, employing various switches for optimal results. Specifically, we'll use DIR to specify the enumeration mode, hyphen U to specify the target URL, and hyphen W to specify the path of the word list. During directory enumeration, we discovered four directories, image, assets, CSS, and JS. It seems these directories contain their respective content. Upon examining the image directory, I discovered images used in the Bootstrap website. However, there didn't seem to be any interesting files. Let's proceed to the next directory. After some investigation, I stumbled upon an intriguing directory named blog within the fonts directory. Upon accessing the blog directory, I encountered another web page that appeared to be broken. Let's analyze its web technology, which might provide insights for gaining a foothold in the web app. Using Wapalizer, I determined that the running broken web page WordPress. As it's a WordPress website, this means we can potentially enumerate and identify vulnerabilities using WP Scan. If you're unfamiliar with WP Scan and how it's utilized for enumerating WordPress websites, I recommend you to watch this video for a comprehensive overview. Now, let's move forward with scanning the WordPress blog to uncover details such as the WordPress version, theme information, plugin details, and security related headers. Open a new terminal window and enter the command wp scan URL, followed by the URL of the WordPress site you want to scan. After the scan, WP Scan will provide insights into the WordPress installation, including version numbers, theme information, detected plugins, and whether XMLRPC functionality is enabled. The scan results may highlight security concerns such as outdated software versions and exploitable features like XMLRPC, which attackers could target. However, the scan may not initially provide plugin information. Let's run WP Scan again to enumerate the plugins. To do this, we'll use the AP flag during the scanning process. Still, WP Scan hasn't provided us with any plugin information. By default, WP Scan operates the plugin enumeration in passive mode, as indicated in the WP Scan help documentation. To address this, we need to switch the plugin detection mode to aggressive. Let's proceed with the scan again. Upon completion, the results indicate that two outdated plugins are installed within WordPress, Akismet and Mtiskas. Since they are outdated, they likely have vulnerabilities. You can verify this using AI tools or by searching on Google. However, I'll demonstrate an effective way to check for vulnerabilities in these plugins. 
The effective method involves using a WP Scan API token. WP Scan provides 25 daily requests. To obtain a token, visit wpscan.com slash register, and then here, register by providing some details. After clicking the register button, you'll receive an email to verify your email address. Once verified, you'll be able to access the API token. I have blurred this token. The next step is to provide this token to WPScan using another flag specifically for API tokens. Now, let's run the scan again. In the results, WPScan identified 16 vulnerabilities within those plugins, which were not detected in our previous scan. By exploiting one of these vulnerabilities, we can gain a foothold on the vulnerable server. Foothold To establish a foothold, I'll focus solely on exploiting the unauthenticated arbitrary file upload vulnerability. Exploiting this flaw in a WordPress plugin entails using it to upload a malicious file, typically a web shell or a reverse shell, to the target server. To upload the malicious file, we need to identify an area where uploads are possible. Typically, on a blog, we can find such an area in the comments section. Let's check one of the posts. Upon clicking on a post, I encountered an error message stating having trouble finding that site. This issue arises because the IP address is unable to access the blogger.htm domain. Therefore, we need to add this host. To do this, open the host's file located in the etc directory using the nanotext editor. As this requires administrative privileges, execute the command with sudo. Next, add the host to the file, save it by pressing Ctrl plus X, and confirm with yes. Afterward, refresh the web page. When you navigate to any blog on the target website, you'll notice a comment section at the bottom. Within this section, you'll find a file upload option in the right-hand corner. Now, it's time to obtain a shell by uploading the PHP reverse shell. First, locate the PHP reverse shell file. Let's copy this file to the Kali home directory. Before uploading the shell, we need to make some adjustments. Specifically, we must replace the IP address in the shell with our host only adapter's IP address. Additionally, since uploads may be restricted to image files, let's rename the file extension from .php to .png. For more detailed guidance, consider watching a video tutorial on exploiting file upload vulnerabilities. This will provide a clearer understanding of the process. When uploading the shell.png file, we need to manipulate it to establish a shell connection. Utilizing Burp Suite, we can intercept the request, post comment, in Burp Suite. However, before that, we need to start a listener using Netcat. Let's start by launching Burp Suite. Access the proxy tab and activate intercept mode to capture target requests. Configure your browser's proxy settings using Foxy Proxy. Switch the proxy to Burp Suite within the Foxy Proxy extension. Upon uploading the file, Burp Suite automatically intercepts the uploaded data. Let's modify the .png extension to .php and click forward to execute the reverse shell file upon upload. Since the uploaded file is detected as a PHP file, we need to bypass it by adding GIF89A into the reverse shell file. This filter helps bypass the restriction of image file uploads, as the target server only accepts image files. Now, let's upload the modified file. By forwarding the altered intercepted data in Burp Suite, we successfully established a shell connection.
Next, let's check the user's identity on the target system. Upon investigation, I discovered that the user identity is www.data, and the group is also the same. However, this is not the desired outcome. To spawn a shell, I need to determine which version of Python is running. It turns out that Python 3 is in use. I'll execute the command python3 c, single quote, import pty semicolon pty.spawn, open parenthesis double quote slash bin slash bash double quote close parenthesis single quote. To spawn the shell. Additionally, I'll change the export terminal to xterm. Now, let's locate the user flag, typically found in the user directory. In every Linux system, there is a home directory containing user directories. Upon inspection, three directories are present, James, Ubuntu, and Vagrant. I suspect the user flag may be located in the James directory. Let's attempt to open it using the cat command. However, upon accessing it, we encounter a permission denied error. Fortunately, there is another user that may assist in opening the user flag. Let's switch to the Vagrant username. Upon switching the user, it prompts us to input a password. Upon researching, we find that Vagrant is a tool for creating and managing virtual development environments. Typically, the default username and password for a Vagrant virtual machine are Vagrant. Let's input the default password and see if it grants us access. Success! With the default password, we can now potentially access the user flag using the cat command. However, I suspect that the Vagrant user does not have permission to access the user.txt file. Let's verify the user's privileges to obtain the user flag. Additionally, let's escalate privileges to obtain the root flag and complete the task. Privilege Escalation During the privilege escalation process, our main objective is to gather system information and identify any potential vulnerabilities or misconfigurations that could grant us higher privileges, ultimately allowing access to the root level. To begin, let's conduct a user permissions enumeration to assess the user's rights and privileges on the system. This can be accomplished by executing commands such as sudo-l or uname-it to determine which commands the current user can run with elevated privileges. After running the sudo elf command, I discovered that the user Vagrant has all permissions, indicating that no password is required to use the sudo command. Now, let's run the sudo su command to confirm our assumption. And voila! We are now root. Now, let's rerun the previous command to view the user flag. Finally, we now have the user flag. Now, it's time to shift our focus to obtaining the root flag. Navigate to the root directory, and you'll find the root flag. Here it is. I suspect both the user flag and root flag are encoded in base64 format. Let's decode them to reveal their contents. If you have any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I'm here to assist and address any inquiries you may have.